Let's talk not physical, not physical. Let's talk not physical. Let's talk not physical. Let us have some spirit talk. Some spirit talk. Let us have some spirit talk. Hi everybody, this is the non-physical channel. Uh, this is Claudio Soprano, I have Michael Lee and I have Bonnie Jennings. Bonnie Jennings uh, had a powerful NDE. NDE is a near-death experience and she wrote a, a book about that. So Bonnie, maybe we can say, you can say something about the NDE and when, when it happened. Okay. Okay, well, thank you for having me on your show. I look forward to meeting you and uh, Michael, and um, it's a thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Uh, so sure. I, you want me to start about my NDE, and um, uh, it was almost five years ago, uh, February the 8th. It began on February the 8th, 2019, and um, I, I had been a nurse, and um, I had taken a medication and I don't want to get into anti-med thing. It's not only, you know, so I had taken a medication. I'm highly sensitive to medicines. And so I had a reaction to it. And so um, two months later, um, I died uh, that evening. Um, the nightly news came on and I had had an asthma attack all day and um, my asthma medicine didn't work. And so um, I was getting so confused and um, the oxygen levels were leaving me. And so uh, about eight o'clock at night, I knew I couldn't call EMS because I couldn't think about that. That was it. That was so far from, you know, a confused mind. And so about 1030 or 1130 that night, uh, the newsman came on and he said, this is the coldest night of the year. There's ice on the ground. Don't drive anywhere. And uh, I'm in East Texas and we can't drive in the ice. And so um, I thought to myself, boy, I pick a really fine time to die. <laughs> and and uh, I live out in the country, so I'm thinking I'm a, I'm a long way from the, the hospitals and he's got to drive on ice and, you know, and um, anyway, I didn't call EMS, but I remember I was standing by my bed in this room and I, before I hit the ground, I said to myself, um, I took, I picked a fine time to die tonight. <laughs> and that was that. I don't remember hitting the ground. I don't remember where I landed or anything. I was just gone, just, just gone. And um, so um, as my book says, um, the hospital records say I was admitted the next day. And I do remember having a conversation with my children the next morning. And so the only thing I can think is I was having numerous uh, NDEs. You know, I would, that's the only thing I can think of because the hospital admission time was like 9.30 or 10.30 the next day. How, how did you get to the hospital? How do I get where? To the hospital. Uh, by EMS. Uh -huh. Thank you. Oh, okay. Um, so they did get there. I don't remember it. I, my son took videos of them on the floor. I was on the floor here in this room and they were working on me and I have the videos. They freaked me out when I saw them, but um, I'm bare breasted and he's working on me and it's kind of embarrassing, but heck, they brought me back to life. But <clears throat> um, I, um, I was take, my son told me they worked on me for over an hour and um, I had, when they arrived, I had, I had no pulse, no respirations and nothingness. I don't know how long it took them to get here. Um, so my son said he followed the ambulance to the hospital and it took them an hour to get there. Mm -hmm. And he said they were doing CPR on me on the way. So I don't know how long, it was a long time. Mm -hmm. And in the process of it, they fractured my neck and they busted my back and they did some pretty rough stuff, but hey, I'm here, I'm walking, I'm alive. And so um, that's the way that goes. A lot of times when you have CPR, 
that happens. So that's expected. <clears throat> now I am raspy. And the reason I'm raspy is because when I went in the hospital, they intubated me five years ago. And so the intubation left me very, very raspy. So I have to drink all the time, especially when I'm talking. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So um, anyway, um, I, um, I get to the hospital and I'm in a coma. I don't know, two days, three days, maybe two days. I don't know. I don't know exactly. But um, <clears throat> I wake up and my sister's there. My two children are there. And um, I'm very confused. And I have um, all kinds of tubes in me and everything. And, and all I know is I looked up at the IV machine and I, I said to the doctor who was standing there, I said, I'm allergic to that. What you have going in my body? And so they had to stop that immediately and reverse the whole situation. Mm. And so, um, but, okay, that's the emergency part. So I died. And, um, okay, I'm going to tell you, every, there is not a timeline there. There is no time. Offer. Birth is where there's a time. There, there's no time. So <clears throat> what I'm going to describe to you is like being in a balloon. Okay, and that balloon is our space where we are when we're off Earth. You know, that is our, that's where we sit, that's where we reign, that's <clears throat> a pod there, that's what I believe we're in a pod. And <clears throat> from that pod, um, we can, okay, so um, like I describe it as a red balloon. So if you imagine this, you're not on a timeline, but here we are in this life, you, all three of us, everybody watching, okay, you are in this balloon, really, but you popped out. That little balloon became a little balloon on the balloon, and that became a moment in time, and that time period is your life, okay, from 1952 to 19, uh, to 20, whatever, okay, that's, that would be my lifespan. So that little balloon came out, and when it's finished, it goes back into the pod, and so when you're in that little pod, you can bounce back a few hundred years or a thousand years, and you can go forward, okay? So um, that's the first thing I want to tell you. I, I woke up there, and I believe that I was in a something like a Petri dish, and there were no walls. Uh, there was no color. Um, there was no one around. I was just me by myself. And I answered a question for somebody who asked me, well, how long were you there? And I, I couldn't answer that. But when I thought about it, I came back with the explanation. I was there as a seed. And when that seed grew, I was able to speak out, hey, I'm over here. Is somebody going to come get me? Am I, where am I? You know. And at that point in time, when I was able to say, where am I? Uh, something rolled over to me like like a robot, I would say. I didn't see it. Um, I just knew I was scooped out of that and I was placed at the beginning, I guess. And um, so um, here I am. I'm at, um, I'm at, I'm watching a mountain, a big snow-covered mountain. And that mountain has blood, red, red, red blood coming down it. And it has a stream of blood, and I'm, it threw me. I thought, okay, I'm in hell. And I, and I looked at, I looked up, and there was an Asian, very, very tall Asian man with a straw hat on. And I said, am I in hell? And he says, do you think you're in hell? And I, I said, no. He says, well, then you're not. He says, you're at the cleansing pool. He says, every time you ascend, you'll come back here. You'll be cleansed. He says, oh, see all these brains here? He says, I'm cleansing. And I said, well, does it hurt? And he says, well, did it? And I said, oh, okay, no. And with that, boom, I was gone. I was gone to the next level. Now, at this point... Uh, sorry, let, let me stop you a little bit. Uh, when you were in that situation, do you remember having a body or, or you just felt like you were energy at that time? Well, um... In the Petri dish, I was energy, just energy. Energy, right? Yeah. Uh, when I remember myself, I'm actually a picture of myself. 
that I had about 10 years ago. That's who I see I, who I am. But that picture is like my frame now. It's always looking off in this direction. <clears throat> so is that picture. So I kind of laugh about it now because that's how I visually saw me. I didn't see myself moving around or I didn't see anything physical. Oh, that's fine. And the communication with the entity, it was, was it telepathically or was there some like audio? Or you don't, you're not sure about that? I'm going to say it was telepathic because we don't have physical there. There was no physical. So, and that part I really don't remember, but, but. Yeah, it, it can actually be both uh, because they can throw you a, a thought, but at the same time you can hear something. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anyway, go ahead. I, I wanted to, I was curious about that. <laughs> well, so from that point, okay, I, I end up, um, Oh, okay. I'm standing in the desert and I'm all by myself and it's a gold desert and there's wind blowing, but it's not hot. And off in the distance, a long way, I can see this huge boulder and it started rolling up to me and it was round and it was very thick and it ran, ran it came and it sat right in front of my feet. And I looked at it and there were no carvings on it, nothing. It was, there was no writing on it or anything. And I thought, well, that's kind of odd. What does that mean, you know? And all of a sudden the five, six o'clock spot in that boulder opens up. Mm. And I look through it and it's kind of like a doorway, like, come on in, enter. And so I entered into it and in my book, I drew a picture of it being very green and lush and the entrance of it and, and my animals stood there. I really never saw my animals there. It's just, I, I drew it from my memory of missing them, but I did not see them there. Anyway, um, I walked through that door and <clears throat> suddenly I see a man and um, I know the man and he knows me and it's a male energy. And I drew a picture of him and he's in my book. And um, um, I said to him, I said, how come, you know, how come I didn't have lights and tunnels and angels and all these people meeting me? And, and I remember saying to him, you know, I'm a good person. I don't know why I didn't have those things. And he just looked at me, he didn't answer me. He, did, he didn't respond. And uh, I did find out that they don't, they don't give you the answers. They allow you to give them. Okay. They don't, they don't, uh, they want you to do the work. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Yes. I, I think, I also think that they, they want you to feel secure of yourself by, by, by giving to you the confirmation of uh, what was going on. Like, so you could feel more secure that you were in control. Yeah. I think they want you so. to feel, feel that I way. That's a good way of putting it. I never thought about that, but yeah, I would say that his uh, behavior to me was like, you can do this. You know, you can, you can do right, it. Exactly. Exactly. You know, so that, and so, um, um, so anyway, he bends down to the dirt and he picks up dirt, sand and dirt and, and he holds it up and he, he lets it fall, trickle from his hands. And I'm looking at it and I see the most beautiful flakes of golds and irons and metals and elements that I had never looked at the earth that way. And there were like fractals beneath us, just unbelievable going on forever and ever and ever, and ever beneath our feet, fractals mm. of magnificent energy nice and just uh, i mean it was so i think i was more blown away by seeing that because we take it for granted every day we walk out on the dirt and we don't look and see what's beneath us and it was just i mean i could see the elements like bacteria and viruses everything that was in the dirt that is beneath our feet and we just don't we don't even see it and when I returned, uh, one of the things that I got into was herbal medicine. I got a, received a certificate in herbal medicine because of that event um, in my NDE. Nice. But, uh, yeah. 
So at that point in time, after he showed me that, we went over, we went to the pyramids, we went to the Sumerian tablets. I remember I put my hand on the Sumerian tablets and I could read them. They were, they were like brand new. It was like, okay, I'm reliving this. I've been here. I know what these mm -hmm. mean. And um, that was the first message that was ever, well, not the first, but the, the, the oldest message here on earth given to us that we found um, that's still available to us. And um, so I'm, I'm reading and I'm just really thrilled and I feel so a part of the Sumerians and um, just, just fascinating uh, learning ancient history and um, going back in time. And from there, we, we went to see the pyramids, we went to the Grand Pyramids, and uh, we went to Machu Picchu, and then we flew up through um, Central America and into Mexico. And um, I was, this, my being took me to all the places that he knew that I loved. And um, at that point, um, he said, are you ready? And I said, for what? <laughs> he said, stretch your arms out. And so um, just like in, there's no place like home, there, it was, I had my arms stretched out and I had my eyes closed, my virtual eyes closed. He said, he says, um, he says, think. Um, I don't know if he told me Orion's belt, I can't remember, but we ended up at Orion's belt and we ended up traveling at the speed of thought. Now you were just talking about a few minutes ago about getting into the other levels. How do I get there? How do I get into the other dimensions? And so it's like we enter the other dimensions through our speed of thought. Right. We don't go there physically, right? We enter in through our mind. And so yeah. that's what he showed me is, is you know, we're gonna go there through our mind. And I said, okay. And so um, I looked out and I said, is that Orion's belt? And he said, yeah, that's a So, um, and parked outside of Orion's belt with this huge, gigantic, I mean, huge spaceship. And it was several levels high and there was a circular part. <clears throat> there was a rectangular building part, gigantic in size. And there were other areas built like, um, like a little city, okay? And um, we kind of went in what looked like a back door, actually. We parked the, ourselves and walked in through the back doors and started going down a long hall that did not have, um, was not physical. You know, it was, I guess it was imaginary. I don't, you know, I, it's no, it could be, could be some, some door like uh, energy, with energy, like, like uh, you see in some sci-fi movies. Yeah. I mean, it, it can be anything, actually. Well, I've always said imagination, but that doesn't quite. Imagination sounds like I made it up, but it's it was there. But kind well, of no, like, it's all shared information. But but it's it's yeah. it's, it's what it, what we are. It's consciousness. Mm -hmm. What what you describe with the spaceship, I don't know. It just intuitively makes sense to me that in the future, or or in an advanced civilization, that rather than be on a planet which is it has to be governed by certain rules if you have enough materials you can essentially assemble living quarters anywhere and that's what this sounds like to me like a very fancy sort of you know artificially developed place where people can you know right. you know beings to exist so it could be that you were experiencing this with from a non-physical context but it could actually be a physical thing in other words, it's, it's like when people, you know, claim like they're, you know, like they're breaking into the White House with their mind or something. It's like there could be like a non-physical version of this spaceship that you were able to access. But it's a real physical thing. It, it yeah, seems real to me. Very, it, was, it was extremely real. You know, and I was not, I mean, I was awed, but I, it was like I had seen it before. Did you feel that the entity wanted to take you there or that you also wanted to go there? Oh, no, I, I wanted to go there too. But, but the entity actually knew maybe that you wanted that and, and helped you get there, right? Yeah. Um, 
my theory on NDEs is you experience what you love. And so I love spaceships and I love, um, you know, I love this stuff. And so I think that might be the answer why I went there. I mean, it makes it, but okay. Let me get further in my story and I'll, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Then I'll explain what I back up a little bit, but <clears throat> so we're walking in this hall and we walk in a room and there's a table again, it's not physical, but it's there. And from underneath it, there's lights coming from underneath it and they're pale, um, calming, very, very pinkish, calming lights, kind of amber pink, you know, but um, just very nice. And um, I'm what my guide is standing behind me and in walk five beings, five. And um, the first one that enters is a, a very, very small grayish looking being. And this he must have been a male. He had a mustache. I've never, I've <laughs> never seen an alien with a mustache, but he, I, because I, I kept looking, what, what does he do with that mustache? But he had a little yes. handlebar mustache and um, he was very friendly. And he says, Come, please have a seat. And I had a seat. And then he says, Don't be nervous, just be calm. And I said, Okay. And so um, sitting next to him, I cannot remember what the being was. The third being kind of looked like Thoth, the bird. Okay, um, very beaky, but he had the beaky eyes, like bird eyes. Mm. And then um, very, very analytical, <clears throat> like look, looking over my books down to the T. And then the, being next to him, I couldn't, I can't remember. And I kind of wonder if those two weren't deliberately blocked from my memory for some reason. And then the four, the fifth being was a very, very, very tall, white, I'd say feminine, white, um, alien, tall, white. And um, she had, I call her she, I don't know. Um, there was no eye contact. And um, she, had, she had the books in her hand. I guess it was my life review books. Um, I don't remember what my life review was. I don't know if it was. I suspect that it was. I'm not for sure because I don't remember it. And uh, I have a tendency to forget things that aren't very good. And so um, and I'm thinking, okay, I don't know what happened. I, I guess I could be hypnotized and taken back there. I don't know. I'd like to be. But um, so she was there and they did their questioning. One of the questions that they asked me is, uh, they handed me a pamphlet of books of old computer typing paper from the 1990s, okay? And it, it, was, it was like 200 pages and they handed it to me and they said, read this. And I looked at it and I said, this is binary code. I don't read binary code. And they looked at me and they just looked at me and I thought, well, I guess I read binary code. I don't know. So I started looking at it and so I, I suppose I gave them the answer. I do know that part of that binary code is um, directions. It's their directions on how do we get to somebody, you know, that's in need. What year was it? Um, where are they? What latitude, longitude, you know, uh, where are they in the process of all this? Let's say that somebody prays, okay, and they need help. And so they, they go to those binary systems and it tells them, you know, puts them in place where they can be where that person is. That is my guess. Okay. So um, um, from there, um, they said, okay, uh, well, you, we're going to take you to another room. And I said, well, wait a minute. Before, before I go, I said, and this may be where I asked why didn't I have lights, tunnels, angels, you know? Um, and they looked at me. <laughs> I'm, I'm really wrapped up. Why didn't I have lights? To, and um, they're like looking at me like, okay. Um, so 
I said to them, are you the creators of human? Are you our, our DNA source? And they said, yes, we are. I said, okay. I was totally, that's fine. That's cool of me. I always thought that anyway. And so um, that was one of the things I was going to answer for you a little while ago. But um, that was my source of uh, believing that mankind did come actually from ETs thousands of years ago. And uh, that's why we're here now. But anyway, so they took me into um, this another ship, another part of this big building, but it was another ship area. And there were these like workmen, okay? They were like little alien greys and they were having a great time. They were just um, kicking back and laughing and joking. And they took the pamphlet of, bi of the binary codes uh, from my hand and they threw them on the floor and lit them with smoke. And they had thought that was so funny and I couldn't figure out why are you laughing at that but they thought that was hysterical and I okay I don't I didn't get it but they did they thought it was funny and so they asked me uh, the computers came on with these star systems and they said um can you identify these for us and I said yes um that's you know Pleiades that's uh or the seven sisters or Cassiopeia or you know um that's uh, Sagittarius, or, you know, the Taurus, the bull. Um, and I have to say here that my father was a navigator in World War II. And so he taught me a little bit about uh, navigating the, um, the cosmos. And that, um, that really helped me there. Um, and so uh, once we did all that, and, the, and I have to tell you, those machines were like looking at a holographic, uh, computer systems. They weren't flat like you and I are looking at. Mm. They were holographic, and you could see the the um, the the dimensions of it. Um, it was much more than two or three D. It was um, living. You know, it was um, kind of a speaking sense. This is where. I'm not for sure if it was here or later, but at some point in this whole journey, I looked out into the cosmos and I saw stars connected to stars. And they were connected by the most unbelievable uh, algebraic equations that, you know, they're not even algebra. I'm not even sure they're calculus or physics or, you know, there are these equations that are so enormous and just so, uh, wow, you know, just the connection of energy between this and this and everything, like a spider web. We are just all, everything is connected. And so, you know, we talk about the matrix. And so all I can tell you is the matrix is not just on the earth. It is covering the entire universe. Okay, we are part of that. We're part of that energy. And yeah, I would like to escape it too, but once we escape it, we escape possibly even our consciousness. You know, I don't know. And I know that's more of your guys, you guys. Well, in a way, you, you were outside this matrix because you are not in, the, in this physical Earth environment. You were in another environment. Well, the universe is in the matrix too, the whole thing. The whole yeah, and, yes. intuitively, ahead, intuitively, I feel I feel like what's happened is is you know certainly and I've been learning just lately about this how there's all these star systems that are within you know like a few thousand light years of us and it could what very well be that um, over time uh, we've developed sort of non-physical wormholes between all these star systems um, and also perhaps worm or even physical wormholes that allow. Uh, say if the Pleiadians want to come here, for example, or where you were, they want to get here really quick, they can do that. And then that's how they can like come here, see the earth, go back. Um, and it sounds to me like in some ways they've created sort of like a network um, mm -hmm. of interactions so that it's not just, again, in a spaceship and wait a thousand years to get back there. I can just hop through this 
this this thing that they've created. Michael, yeah. have have you guys seen the uh, Stargate? Stargate the series, like they they dial, they have like a ring, yeah. and they get oh, transported. Right. You know, that's what this reminds me. Yeah. So it's kind of like that. The energy they they do they put it on that energy. You know, whatever Earth is in Texas, they put it on that energy, and boop, they're here. Yeah. Yeah, and I, it's, and the, and another comment I want to make, and I, you haven't told the whole story yet, is that what it seems to me is that perhaps the reason that your experience is a little bit different than other people is because you may more have a, a heritage or a lineage of being not an earthling, you know, in other words, your guides, your elders, whatever, may be a variety of different species from different, from different worlds. Right. And so you're not going to get like the typical milieu that that maybe someone who spent a lot of time on Earth would, you know, where their guide is an Earthling and their elders are all Earthlings, you know, so you're going to get like this mix and it may reflect also who you've been in many different lifetimes. Yeah. So each one of those beings that you saw may be someone that that you're connected with in, in different ways. I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Uh, another thing that I remember you were saying that at the beginning you thought that I don't understand binary code, right? You were thinking you were not understanding, but then you realized that you were able to understand the binary code. Yeah. Uh, that sounds to me that, that they were trying to give you the message that you, yes. I mean, before having this experience, you were able to understand those things. So kind of like you belong to their their right. culture all, and among them, I mean, you knew like them. You have right. similar background of uh, knowing the technology, information, everything. They were trying to teach me, yes, you do know. Right, exactly. You know? And yes, you can look at it again, look at it again. And um, so, yes, I, I think you're right. I think you're absolutely well, right. Well, it, it, it sounds also like, like uh, for example, some people, they were always together and then one one of them go to the war and then he spends like five years in, in a war and then it's like he, he forgot what happened in the meantime and then your friends actually uh, guide you to remember uh, how you used to be. Right. And the other comment I wanted to make, I mean, and we haven't finished once again, so but is it seems to me like the whole group that you're working with is under the impression that this is a permanent, that you're done with this lifetime right. here. Right. And so it's very interesting that they're under that impression because they're kind of going through with you and kind of waking you up and going, you know, and like you said, perhaps even evaluating and all this stuff. And then meanwhile, the story isn't over. So I'll maybe we'll let her get back. Well, I have other thoughts about this. Um, the way your experience went through, and, and it doesn't have to be like other experiences, is that I don't think everybody has the same backup team on the other side. Yeah. Some some teams that you have, you, I think to me that you had a very strong team, and uh, maybe linked to aliens, that they didn't feel the need to worry about uh, your situation. So they wanted to keep you uh, uh, secure and and make you remember that you used to handle all those things right. so that you feel more confident, more powerful, and don't think about your situation with your physical body in the meantime. They wanted to, to keep your mind away from that, I think, to protect right. you and to, to, to do good to you. So I, I think they have all the best intentions toward you, and they handle it very well. I think so. <laughs> because, you know, um, I ha when I had my NDE, I, I can't remember what question I answered, but I answered a question that they gave me. And it wasn't until about two years later, two years, that I realized I answered that question wrong. And they never corrected me, and they never scolded me, and they didn't, they didn't look like you failed. But it just hit me one day, I answered that question wrong. And so it was like, like what you're saying, is the whole thing was a test maybe for them but maybe for me to start thinking deeper you know mm -hmm. yeah 
Yeah, and I have to tell you that last summer I went and I was tested for many things with a neurologist. I went through 22 brain exams. And so um, I tested very poorly with my IQ. I mean, poorly. And I it freaked me out because um, it just did. So um, it's been a year since I had the test. And this year, I think I've grown more mentally than any other. Uh, the the um, uh, the NDE, the being without oxygen for over 30 minutes, left me with an anoxic brain injury. So um, sometimes I believe <laughs> that they implanted a new thought pattern or something new inside the brain. Because I think totally, I woke up. I'm a vegetarian now. I woke mm. up in the hospital and said, I'm a vegetarian. Okay, that is so weird. I got home and I wanted a beer at 9.30 in the morning. Okay, it was like, I got to go have a beer. It's, it's 9.30. Okay, there were so many little things that when I woke up, something's different. And that, that, that's a good sign because that means you have a strong team on the other side that... They they can change stuff so that you you are at the best uh, to handle your life. So if they felt that you could have a health problems if if you don't have a good diet, so they kind of like encourage you to go through the vegetarian path. And right. I mean I mean it goes, that's a good good news. I mean I think this experience yeah. shows you that you have a strong team. Yes. So yeah, it that also you don't have to worry like about anything. The fact that you that you're essentially reversing mental decline uh, from this injury is really good too. I mean, you wouldn't expect that. You know, you, you know, you, th you hear people that they have some sort of brain injury and they're disabled for life, and meanwhile, it's almost like you're getting better, which is really good. Exactly. And there have been people who've been had a near death experience for four minutes that are in nurse, nursing homes now and cannot speak. So, um, yes. What, whatever they did for me, it was to bring me back for a reason to either complete something that I needed to complete or um, something, something they're trying to pull me into doing. And so we'll figure it out uh, with their help. And uh, I do feel that um, intellectually this year I've grown so much. I still can't add five plus seven, 12, 12. But anyway, um, I'm getting better. But um, anyway, let me, I'll finish my story for you, if you don't yeah. mind, it's not too much longer. Um, they, the, the, the little spacemen, the little gray aliens, they opened the back door of the spaceship and they said, you are free to go. And I, I said, what? They said, you can go anywhere you want. We, we know you're okay. I said, well, okay. And so I just put my arms out, speed of thought was there, wherever I wanted to go. I found a nebulous and I sat down on that nebulous and I was watching, uh, I, saw, I sat on a planet and I watched what I call the Elohim, uh, which is plural for God um, and is a creator. I know it's in the Bible, but it's, um, it's a plural meaning of God and it means creator. Okay, it's not a judgmental kind of dude. But anyway, he's up there with, uh, I call it a witch's wand, but it's a long pole. It's got those shiny sparkles on the end, and it's doo doo. And he's like painting the nebulous. He's just up there having such a good time, just loving that nebulous. It's just incredibly in love with art artistry, just making. And, um, while I was sitting there, I noticed there on, on another planet next to me, there was a, a, a male, um, probably in his 30s, fairly handsome. Um, I don't know who he was, um, but he, I nodded, he nodded, and I, I felt he was there for my protection should I get lost or whatever. But um, in the background of all this time, I have heard my sister calling me, Bonnie, you can't go now. It's not your time. You've got to come home. You have animals to take care of. Who's going to take care of these animals? And um, 
my mother's deceased, but we always say, mother told us that it's not your time. So she's saying to me, mother told me it's not your time. You're supposed to come back. And I'm like hearing her and I'm like ignoring her because I don't want to come back. Okay. And uh, no one's there telling me you have to come back. So I'm sitting up there on the nebulas and I'm hearing her say, come back, come back. And here's where I tell, where I'm going to tell you that uh, about three months ago, she said to me, I never said that to you. And I said, I heard you. I said, were you thinking that in the hospital? She said, yes, I was thinking it. But I said, so I heard what you were thinking. So anyway, mm -hmm. back at that point, I said, um, I start getting more thinking about my dogs and what have you. And um, I start worried about them. And I, I looked at the guy. He says, are you ready to go back? And I said, yeah, I guess so. He says, okay. He said, put your hands out. And I said, okay. And he says, jump through the tunnel. He gave me a tunnel. <laughs> and it was purple. He gave me a purple tunnel. Mm -hmm. And as I'm sliding back from outer space into my body, he's, he's yelling at me through the tunnel. And don't forget the love. He said, um, the only thing that, the only glue that's worth anything on this planet is love. He said, don't forget it. And I said, okay. And I, slid back in my body and I awakened and um, I, I remembered my sister telling me that so many times and she said, I, I didn't tell you that. And I said, but you were thinking it, weren't you? And she said, yes. And I said, and I heard it the whole time I was there enjoying myself. I'm hearing you putting a guilt trip on me that I needed to come back. But anyway, about 11 days later, I had another little incident. And um, at that point in time, I felt the transporter or the death angel was around me. And uh, my, I ha was having cardiac enzyme problems. And um, um, the nurse came in and told me later on that night that, that my uh, cardiac test was fine. And so I told that the transporter they could leave now. Thank you very much. And then um, it happened once again about six months later. And so I have... That's my story of my NDE. Very good. One question, the, the transporter, like you said, was it a different entity from the one that is, uh, was at the beginning of the NDE with you? It, no, the, it was different. It, that one, uh, the transporter was kind of like um, dark lights. Very beautiful. So at least you have two, two entities like, kind of yes. like uh, with you, uh, uh, like a company and yeah. going through. Okay. Yes, but I, I said, you got to go. You need to go now. <laughs> and he left. I said, I've decided to stay. I'm going to stay. So it, I guess in that 11 days in the hospital, I was there for almost three weeks. I was deciding, am I going to stay or not? And so um, anyway, I did. And here I am. I really, I really like the messages you got because they they are simple, straight to the point. I mean, love, love. Uh, I think it's like unconditional love, right? Yes. That, that message. It's mm -hmm. a strong, simple. <clears throat> yes, love. Love is the key to all things, to all to us right now, on this earth is love, and it's not saying I love you. It's doing I love you. All right. Because if you're saying I love you and then you're not doing it, then, you know. So, so one thing, so it sounds like one thing that, uh, that, that you experience from this is, is a, 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 a long recovery, right? I mean, there was, I mean, and you're starting to feel better lately, but it's, but it's been a long recovery. But I'm also wondering like, uh, well, and you can comment about that, but also I was wondering about like, like, you know how, like, when people have NDEs, like, they, I don't know, it just changes, like, their whole life philosophy, and, I mean, how did, did it change you any, or did, was it sort of consistent with what you believe in Enormous, okay. enormous changes. Well, you know, I, 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 first thing was, I'm a vegetarian. Okay. Um, in, a, in a way... I, not really. In a way, I'm more patient. But once I'm pushed to my limit, then I'll 
lose my patience, you know, but um, I, it's hard to say, but I have, okay, you asked me before about psychic abilities. And before my NDE, I would consider myself pretty psychic. Okay. However, now it's changed from those psychic abilities, which those hardly work now, you know, um, I can't get those to work anymore that, that I used to use. Um, so I'm in the relearning again, but it seems to be instead of, it's just a knowing. Okay. Uh, it's just, if you ask me a question and I know it, it's because I know it. I mean, it's not because I processed it. It's because it was, it was just dropped there and I, I know it. And, um, um, it's being able to figure things out, which the IQ said test said that I wouldn't be able to do, um, through a process of, um, you know, critical thinking that's over time. Like I'm not instantaneous. If, if you ask me to do your reading, I, my reading would probably take about a week, you know, that I would have to, okay, sit down with it and what's, what's going on. Um, before my NDE, I, I had visitations all the time. Uh, my best friend died in 20, uh, 20, 2009, and she stayed with me for three months, and I finally had to ask her to leave. So um, it's, it's different now. It's, um, I can't describe it. It's, it's just a knowing. Mm. It's a knowing. And do you remember your dreams uh, lately? Oh, or? yes. Thank you. My dreams are incredible. They are over the top. And I do a lot of communication, especially during the during dreams. And I sleep more now. And it's it's like, I, OK, I can't wait to get there. Because I'm, <laughs> yeah, they're processing. They're giving me so much when I get there. And um, They'll just give me a little information, you know, I, off the top of my head. I can't um, really think of anything, but I'll, I might be just taking a walk in the park and they'll show me a leaf. And from that leaf, I'll say, oh, look at the veins. Look at look how it grows. It's all going this way, and the, you know, and it and that might remind me of the matrix, you know, mm -hmm. I saw, you know, how the, the vessels go. And it's just we're all, we are all part of it. Um, at some, some, I was interviewed about a year ago, and um, it was quite a bit, very interesting interview, and it had to do with um, don't go into the light. Have you heard that? You've heard that? Yes. Heard? Okay. So um, when I, in my NDE, and I, I don't think I brought this up, but I, I did see pods. And I painted them another color after I saw them initially. And initially they were gray. And so after my after my NDE experience, I colored them pastels. And so she asked me why I did that. And I I really didn't want to answer her. But <clears throat> the more I thought about it is because and I and I finally said to her, and I did another podcast with them, I said it's because the um the pods that i saw were initially gray and she, and what do you think about that and so uh it took me back to the matrix to the movie and are we are we um are we in a pod creating for them energy and so that theory of walking into the light is to remove uh memory and they take that and they live off of it. And so I don't, um, it was very interesting. Um, I'm not, the only thing I can tell you is since that they have showed me in a dream that the whole universe is in the matrix. And cause I was, I was saying, how do I get out of this place? I really want out of this place. You know, I was trying, there, there have been things that said, if you, if you die, then go up through the holes and the ceiling. And um, 
there was part of my book that I actually got something about that. But, but anyway, after, after she told me that, I, I thought, how do we get out of this? And then in the dream, it says, if you get out of it, your consciousness, I mean, everything ceases. You're part of it. Everybody's part of it. And so um, it's very deep. And that's only the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, so, the, the, well, let me, let me yeah, finish so, with the, the Matrix and then you can say. The, uh, I, I disagree with the Matrix movie in the sense that in the Matrix movie, the parent reality, it's uh, physical too. So the the I mean when he wakes up he's under the, some like you say pod with tubes and stuff. But what what I see or what I think is that we wake up in a non physical, not not in another physical reality. Right, right. And actually I think yeah, your your team was showing you that you don't have to fear anything. So they yeah. show you stuff that so you, I, I don't think it's good that you think that you're gonna be submitted by some machines yeah. or you know like the movie because the movie here they, they want to show i don't know why but they, they like to show fear to people like everything is uh, terrific like the ghosts the, the the spirits are usually bad spirits evil spirits and it doesn't match with the, the experiences of people that usually you meet more angels than demons i mean yeah that's great so my comment, the way you're describing this is, so the way I perceive um, our individual, because oh, yeah. it's funny, yeah. Tom Campbell uses the term individuated unit of consciousness, but, but that's not a bad term at all. Our soul is an individuated, individuated unit of consciousness. It's derived from another, a larger individuated unit of consciousness, which is derived from another one. In other words, we're all part of what I would call like a tree of consciousness. And, and we all, we were given the blessing of existing, of even just being, um, but being part of that whole thing is, is, just, is just who we are. I mean, it's, um, you know, and there's different ways of dealing with it. You know, you look at the earth system where there's a lot of blocking and a lot of memory loss, but you can compare that perhaps to other alien systems where they have a, um, a larger amount of awareness of who they are while they're in the physical. So it's just different levels of amnesia and forgetfulness. And I think Earth is, is sort of more on what I would call like the restrictive side, right? You know, we're really, really restricted here, but, but that's, that also makes it like one of the, you know, most powerful schools, obviously, some people would say it's unfair and, you know, they have a point, but but it's also one of the best schools, because if you can practice love here, you can practice love every, anywhere because it's just mm -hmm. so you see what I'm saying. So but I but I do feel like on average, a physical existence doesn't need to be nearly as onerous as it is here. And I think really I think what people a lot of people are complaining about is they probably have lived in systems that weren't as bad and they're wondering why is this place so cruel? It's and at some point they just they agreed or maybe they were coerced but you know they came here i i feel like though as you evolve as a soul it doesn't have to be as crazy like like you can consciously make better decisions in your life you can surround every, the people around you with that positivity and over time the earth doesn't have to be such a tragedy um although that gets me to uh, the, the question I want to ask you, though, is um, when in these dreams, are you running into any of the characters from your NDE or is it more abstract, the connections with, with the people that were part of your NDE? Like when I dream, I am think, I'm not positive that I've been with my guide. Uh, I don't see him um, in a physical I may, but I don't remember it. But um, I am definitely with a team of people. And um, I feel like I'm in a pea pod again, growing, and a little leaf here, a little leaf here, and, and they're helping me. So that's, uh, that's what I think. 
Did you have dreams uh, involving fear uh, of you being in situations that that you feel in danger uh, with fears? Did I feel fear there? No, in dreams. Do you have dreams that, for example, oh, you have oh, a situation? Sometimes I do, but it's very rare. Um, you know, there'll be something really stressful in my life and I'll dream something that's very fearful. But usually my dreams are very deep. Um, being taught something. Nice. And it might be a simple thing, just like the leaf. Look at the leaf. Look at the leaves. Look at the look at the veins. Look how they flow. Look at the color of it. You know, um, study it. You know, um, don't take don't take things for granted. I wish I could. I wish I could remember something. I write them down as I remember them. I just don't recalling them right now. But um, as I get them, I'll write them down. So, in my experience from doing astral projecting, most of the time astral projections and dreams are in fairly what I would call low vibrations. In other words, vibrations closer to Earth. And so what ends up happening is, is that we're just way out of tune, I would say, with our team. The team can still, like you said, they still can interact with us in ways, but it's almost like they're so out of frequency that we don't see them. So that's very consistent with what you're saying. Um, but you can actually develop, I, I think, and anybody can develop sort of where you raise your vibration and then you can actually reach a certain level of, and, and that, that actually relates to a question I have is during the NDE, did you feel sort of like in a sense of calm, elation? Would you, yeah, how would you describe it? Was it better uh, than Earth? Okay, or, I, I do want to tell you that there was a points, the, there were times that I did feel um, oh, I don't want to use the word fear, but anxiously fearful uh, because, and we touched on this before, uh, you're no longer in a two or 3D world. You are in the center of the universe. I mean, every, you are part of it and it's so enormous. And uh, I mean, you can be a part of a virus. I mean, you can attach yourself and be in the middle of a blade of grass. I mean, that is when you're taking on um, that, that dimension, I don't know what dimension it is. It's just, it's way beyond, you know, imaginable. Um, you become anything that you think about. And that's, that's a little frightening. Okay. So uh, when you, Somebody will be there, a guide or something will, you know, guide you back. Hey, you know, over here, come back over here. And so I don't, even in dreams, um, I wake myself up. If I had a bad dream last week, but I can't, um, I was on a path. It was, um, and the path, I woke myself up enough that I changed the dream. I'm getting off the path. This is a wrong, this is not right. This is not a good path for me. I'm going to go down another one. And so um, I was able to do that. And it, and it took some time because uh, my mind wanted to go back down that path, down the wrong path. And I had to wait, keep waking myself up. No, no, we're going to go down this path. We're going over here. And so when you're in the NDE, that kind of stuff does happen. Okay. Right. But the, the, be the most of the feeling that I felt there was a part of, I was... In. I was part of, I was one, I was, mm. you know, just. One was, with, with the universe or one with your team? Uh, the universe. Wow. The universe and the team, you know. Um, I guess they were pleased with me at that NDE uh, reading that I can't remember, but uh, because I don't think they would have let me go. And I think they were quizzing me pretty hard there. Um, That's interesting. And I, th I guess I did okay. But um, I don't do, do good with testing anyway because I kind of freeze um, when I feel on the spot. So um, I didn't freeze and um, everything was, I mean, good to go, I guess. But mm -hmm. um, Would you say that, like, I, I don't know this because I haven't studied a lot of the NDEs, but but it seems like a lot of people report when they have an NDE that they're kind of like, they're almost like in this euphoric state and 
you know, it's just so wonderful and, you know, and they don't want to leave it. Oh, right. Stuff right. like that. How do you, did, did you, you didn't have that kind of euphoria. It was more right. kind of practical for you, the whole thing. Oh, yeah. When I was in the cosmos, yes. Yeah. Oh. Well, when I was in the pyramids, yes. Oh, very much so. But, and I didn't want to leave all those beautiful, wonderful things. But responsibility comes in your so mind. You, so your memories were your euphoria, but the actual core of your being when you were in that spaceship, it was almost like getting down to business kind of thing. You know, it's like you're being tested. You know, here's what we're monitoring, you know, it's, it, it, that's really interesting. It's, it shows that sort of, cause normally when I try to go into these higher vibrations, it, it almost feels like you're, you're, you're becoming euphoric and you're not thinking clearly. And it sounds to me like when you got to the core of where you needed to be, in some ways you were very clear headed and you experienced all the range of emotions that, that, that we experience here. Really interesting. Yeah, my but my brain is clearing over the years. However, for the first couple of years after, I was still partially there. My yeah. brain was still partially yeah. there, and I was getting more, feel you know, more messages. I, in fact, I, I I had to pull over on the side of the road at one point. Um, a co uh, three or four months after this happened, they let me start driving again. And I pulled over because I didn't know where the hell I was. You know, I'm like, mm. where am I? And I couldn't remember. And I'm like, why, why did they let me drive so early? I can't believe this. But um, so those first, you know, first few years were hard. But um, um, I, can, I forgot what we we're talking about. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. No, no, I no, 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 you know, you're, well, what you're talking about now is, you know, your, your neural connections are starting to build back up, but, but I find it really fascinating that, yeah, that what you were and during that experience, it was very sort of practical, intellectual, um, versus like the, oh, I'm floating in wonderment and, and all of creation, but, it, but it was more like, okay, I'm in creation, I'm in all of creation. But there's kind of things that need to be done. You know, there's there's a it's almost like you were you weren't just part of a team where the team uh, was the people supporting you on your mission to Earth. But it was almost like you're part of a team that actually has like certain job duties within. Right. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. What I think. I agree. Yeah, that is really cool. That's really cool. I, I know I know somebody that you would you might like to meet at some point that. Um, that you know she's here now and she's got to do what she's got to do, but but like she has like very important roles, and she discovered them through her NDEs. That you I'd know, I'd love she, to meet her. I'd love, I, I would love to meet her actually. Okay. Yeah. No. And she talks about source code, which is interesting. So it's so that mm -hmm. kind of reminds me of when you talk about the binary. That's what I think. Yeah. Of yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I've never seen. Cool. I mean, I've never played with binary codes here, and why would they hand me a book on binary? Well, codes? you know, it's it, there's a joke. I There's a joke know. amongst programmers that real programmers program in binary, but if but it's a joke <laughs> because nobody actually goes that crazy. We usually use things um, <laughs> called assembly language, which is which is pretty much just a regular English programming mm -hmm. language. So the idea of coding with zeros and ones is 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 just a joke. Yeah. I mean, nobody goes that far. Well, it was actually kind of. I easy. did. I did, Michael. You did. You've coded yeah, with zeros not? and ones. Oh, with punch cards. <laughs> Oh God! To the beat. From the beat, you go to the byte, right? Eight bits. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, they had the punch cards. You would actually, what you do is you took a pin and you poked a zero or a one. Right. And then you put no, that no, card into that. the machine I, I did to receive in code. your information of the so zeros and ones. So tell you where you're at, the zero one, where you're at. Well, so what you're describing is addresses, and that's actually a really interesting question because. Our souls, our individuated units of consciousness, have like a unique address. We are each, and so some people use the term tones, like we're a combination of tones. Mm -hmm. But the way you're describing it is like we almost have like a binary address. And so if you want to contact a certain person, you type in that binary and, and you instantly yeah. 
or it was it? So it's like an ID, right? An, an ID. Yeah, uh, yeah, stuff. like like a social security number. <laughs> <laughs> you know? don't, I mean, <laughs> don't share your binary with others. We don't want to get uh, uh, identity theft. Imagine we say, "Welcome, Claudio. Remember what you owed us in taxes?" Yeah. <laughs> So the joke I have is that someday we're going to become so aware of our past lives that we'll be able to go back and claim, hey, that was my money in my previous life and I want it back. Scary, isn't it? Yeah, we have to go back and claim and clean up all the bad stuff that we did. Well, <laughs> well, that's another thing. Um, we, I have a question. Um, I don't know if I, I might have blended this in when I was watching different videos. But you were talking about how you've had some clairvoyance where you see things. Um, and I was just wondering what that, how that, maybe this was before your NDE, but. Um, oh, before the no. Okay. But um, I have a knowing now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And this seems to be a little bit more accurate. Yeah. Okay. More, more descriptive. Like if all you have is visual, not to 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 put you down, Claudia, but if all you have is visual, it may not give you the whole the whole information, the message that's trying to be sent to you. Whereas if you just know it, then you have the full message. Like I know that I was supposed to be on this program with you too. I oh wow knew oh, it. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but I knew it. So it had to. You know, I had, I'm glad we could do it today. Uh, it worked out, but um, I knew it had to be done because there was something saying you've got, you know, you've got to do this. So for all our audience out there, um, you know, Claudia and I are not that well known. I mean, we've just started our channel, but, right. you know, I, I'm, I'm one of those people that had kind of spent my whole life, not whole life, but the last 20 years doing stuff. And I never really was all that public about it um, for various reasons, you know, my job and stuff like that. But um, but yeah, we're not we're not newbies, I would say. You know, we know, and certainly, um, and when I met Claudia a few few months ago, I mean, I found that that he and I shared um, interest um, not just with studying how the spiritual world works but we're both very technical so that's and that's a rare combination because a lot of times you know it's your you know how it's like the more imaginative art artsy side associated with spiritual things but we like to we want details we want we want facts right. and figures not just you know well this is the right thing to do you know <laughs> well let me tell you the way i met uh, michael Okay. We were in a Zoom meeting. Uh, there is a Facebook group. It's called An Ordinary Made Ordinary. They also have a channel, a YouTube channel. Uh -huh. uh, there are two sisters, um, Julie and uh, Danielle. Mm -hmm. And I was in a Zoom meeting and I I immediately noticed Michael and and when he was talking and then I was talking, I said, this is this guy is like me. So for uh -huh. me, it's like I, I, I have trouble finding somebody that is close to me that not only is into consciousness experiences, but also is good with technical stuff, analytical person, programmer. So we have a lot of things in common. So I say, yeah, I want to I wanna keep talking to this guy. So from there on, I, I texted him. We became friends on Facebook and yeah. we are here now. <laughs> <laughs> How long? Oh, when did, when was that? Uh, forgot. Not very long ago. Claudia has been wanting to do this channel, um, you know, since I started talking even before I met him. He's been wanting to sort of step up things, but it, but he was looking for a good partner. Um, I'm I'm more of the thought process of sharing sort of my experiences, you know, throughout, and also, but but we're both very analytical and. You know, and there are these these big questions that people have, and I'm sure you you know you think and you've been thinking about these things too. Like, why does the system exist? What are we what are we doing here? That kind of thing. And um, it seems to me like your lineage, Bonnie, is is very much is it's it's probably very similar to ours. I mean, you know what's interesting is in different lifetimes we may be more or less analytical. Like, 
Mm. I, I feel like in some lifetimes I was not as analytical and, and, and I'm really, really happy about this lifetime because I feel like in other lifetimes, maybe I didn't quite have the same genetic makeup that, right. you know, that I could really you're, understand. That, you know, your, your DNA does, ha I'm sorry, uh, you know, yeah. it does help. It does. Yeah. And I feel like I was given this really great opportunity because you don't always get the opportunity to be, say, the son of an engineer or the son of a, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's not, you know, it's not every day that you get that. So you want to take it, you want to jump on it when you get the chance. And in other lifetimes, I've been like a soldier or a war, you know, somebody that ends up dying in their 20s. I'm the daughter of an engineer. Yes. Okay. Uh -oh. Interesting. Audio? My father, my father was a civil engineer too. Okay. My brother yeah. is a civil engineer. My sister, an architect. So I come from a family, everybody good in math. Right. <laughs> so that's cool. Very cool. Do you want to mention something about your book or something else you want to say? You know, I wish I had, I've got it packed and I wish I had a copy here to give it to show you, but I have all of them packed away, but I'm on Amazon and the best way to find me is look up B-O-J-E-N-N, Bojen. And um, I pop up, um, and you'll see a little purple book. It says, um, my NDE travels to Orion's Belt with ETs, with extraterrestrials. And um, anyway, that's the best way to find me. I wish I had my book here, but I don't. Well, it's okay. I'm going I'm to put information in the description under the video. Thank and we can so cut this out, but, but you, I assume you self-publish, right? Because I, or did you have a publisher? I do I have a publisher? No. Yeah. I just yeah. put it on Amazon. Why do you think I need one? <laughs> oh no, you don't. That's the thing. I mean, it, well, unless it's, sometimes publishers are good at promoting, but but so so th so it's through Kindle, is that right? Or they can print Oh, I think it does go on Kindle. Yes, yes, Kindle. Yes. And sometimes I run I think I have it like four dollars on Kindle. Uh, sometimes I give it away. Um, oh, I have a question about your book. You you mentioned about drawings. Do you have? Did you put some artwork in there that you? Yes, yes, I have my. And you have to remember that when I came out of this, I was like a kid. So a lot of my artwork is looks like children's drawings. But maybe you can get something from it. Cool. Um, and from that experience, I became an artist, which is really. Mm. Mm. So. I don't know. That is really, yeah, no, that's good. One thing I wish I had was artistic skill to be able to convey what I see, but, and I know other people, and we'll, we'll try to get you in touch with some of these people that, like this one woman, Danielle, she's also an artist, so when she sees an alien, she'll just, like, make, draw a portrait of them, you know, and, and then share it with us, and we're like, oh, my God, that's scary looking, you know, and it's like... Yeah. And she's like, so that's, and I'm sure you, you're, you're developing that skill too, which is really cool. Yeah. Remember I told you when you're in the NDE, you are not in a second, two or three dimensions. Yeah. And so it's impossible, absolutely impossible to draw a picture of yourself inside a 360 universe. Okay. So yeah. I, I keep trying, but, but I, it's without a, Without a hologram, I think it's pretty impossible to do it. But oh yeah, there's something that we were talking before this uh, starting the video about uh, the vision there, that you were saying that you were seeing in all directions uh, simultaneously, like a 360 view. Uh, okay, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, that because people in, in, in OBEs, and I had some some experiences like that. I, I'm able to see. In all directions, oh, like have oh, eyes yes, uh, all yes. over. Okay, yes, yes. Oh, this is one of my favorite ones. Okay, and um, before my NDE and um, oh, 2009. Okay, I'm outside in my backyard and I look up in the sky, and uh, I see these cat beings way up in the sky, and I thought, oh my god. And I, I'm a psychiatric nurse by profession. I'm not anymore, but I was. And so I'm looking at these beings, I'm thinking, am I hallucinating? Am I delusional? And this is what people, you know, see when they're in the psych hospital. And so I said, that's got to go away. 
And so that happened to me a couple of times. And actually on my phone, I have a picture where I took a picture of one up in the trees, just like that. But anyway, mm -hmm. so this, they start popping in on me. Okay. And I say, don't go away. <laughs> you know, I'm not supposed to see this stuff. And so after my NDE, they didn't come right away, but last summer I used to go outside and I would do Qigong outside where you do, um, you know, exercise. And um, so I was doing a pyramid over myself and, um, and I look up in the sky and I'll be doggone. The Irma are there. Those are the cat being, those are the, that's Sekhmed. That's, um, that's the goddess in Egypt, the cat, you know, Toth and Sekhmed. And, um, and they're elaborately, gloriously dressed. And their cat, they have gold on and, and reds and purples and just bangles of jewelry. And I'm like looking at them and they're like looking at me. And we didn't communicate with each other for almost a year. But I would go out there. I, at first, I was a little scared to see them. But then I'd go out there and they would, every time I do the Qigong, they would show up. And so I finally, one day I said, okay, I see you. I know I'm not crazy. Um, uh, so who are you? <laughs> what are you? So immediately um, I st I've got the word the Irma and I found out that the, uh, the Latins know so much more about the Irma. They're very, um, this is part of their culture, which uh, we don't have here. And so, uh, or we didn't, they're coming here now. So I started studying them uh, from Spanish and I don't read Spanish. So I, I do now a little bit. So I had to in order to understand what the Irma is. And so um, I started writing a little bit about it. And just recently I met some guy who also has had the same thing I have. He has um, a channel now where he's on, he gets messages from them. And so um, the Irma came, um, they were in Orion's belt. I could have this history all along. And uh, their planet was destroyed by the reptilian beings. And so they thought that the Irma had, were all destroyed, but they were not. Some of them got out and they uh, ended up in Lyra and in Syria, in Sirius. How, how do you spell the name? Um, Irma, U-R-M-A-H. Oh, okay, thank you. And, and that's how it is in, in Spanish, Irma, U-R-M-A-H, Irma. By the way, I was born in Argentina, so I speak Spanish. Fluent. So you would, you would, <laughs> the, the Irma is suddenly becoming really famous right now. So she's, they're out there. And, um. What I found out is they were possibly the first alien group that um, created mankind, some of us, okay? And so I am thinking that th my relations is probably through them, you know? And uh, I, I could go way off, but that's one of the things that's happened since my NDE, I've allowed them to come in <laughs> And uh, it, if you're a psych nurse, this sounds crazy and she needs medication, but um, it's just one of those things. So I, so this is, I, I, so I remember you talked about this on the, the other video I saw, um, I'm, and I'm trying to develop my clairvoyant senses. So I'm wondering, so your eyes are open and you're looking up, is, is, are the, the images that you see constant with respect to the background or are they constant with respect to your moving your head in other words yeah does that make any sense yeah okay so <clears throat> i see them within the pyramid okay so they rapidly form very rapid and they're one at a time they're very distinct okay but they leave and then another one comes and it's very, it's very distinct. And uh, the females will come. They'll have the ornate headdresses on. And um, they'll leave, that will leave. And um, 
I'll see some eyes, some really intense eyes. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually I'll see the headdress and um, they have incredible eyes. Now, they're not super friendly, but they're not mean. Mm -hmm. And so what I found out about the Irmas are they, um, they are no longer predatory. They uh, eat um, synthesized foods um, or synthesized meats that aren't animal. They, they don't kill anymore. And that happened thousands of years ago. They, um, according to history, they possibly were the original uh, creators of the hieroglyphics on the pyramid. And um, um, you have to really study them because they are fascinating. And I don't know why the Latins get so much, they get so much more of this stuff. They, they mm. hear about it more than we do. Do, yeah. do you think, um, is it South America? Maybe it's a geographical thing? I mean, is it, that maybe like more of a location of where they might? I don't think so. Now, think... Uh, regarding what when you see these things, is your eyes closed or open? I mean, I know it's interesting. Open. Okay. And closed, but more open. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So it seems like the, it's a little bit of like a bleed through dimension. Um, when I do my, um, I do some, I mentioned about how I was doing like electronic sphere communication. And one thing I noticed is when I, it, it seems to be, and I don't know if this is true or not, but it seems to be my camera is picking up I want to say nature spirits. So in other words, dimensions that are close to ours, but not necessarily like ones that I even would see when I'm astral projecting most of the time. It's almost like they're, they're like close to the physical. So it's almost like these beings that you're seeing, they may be, they may or may not actually be physical. Like they might be physical and a different type of physicality. They're physical but, because I asked them, I, I, Kind of said, what dimension are you on? And I I kept getting eight or ten, um, so I I know I, what you're saying. It's it's almost like it's a it's like a it maybe it's you know how like we talk about the Earth going from third to fifth. It's like they might be in a sort of like a lighter dimension, like um you know what I'm saying like um like it's a more um, elevated dimension, uh you know like and maybe they don't. Maybe that, that gives them the ability to transmute, come back and forth, you know, like do do things like transport themselves did to you, us so we can see them and then go back kind of thing. Did, did you hear me? Oh, sorry. No, I didn't. Go ahead. Okay. I, I asked the Irma, I said, how do, may I teach people how to get to you? And they said, well, you can teach it, but there's no guarantee that they'll, they'll get here. And so I I, and they weren't like thrilled that I even asked that question. Well, it's almost, it's almost like they don't want to be polluted from us. I mean, we're like the, we're, we're well, like, so. Collecting their group, they're collecting their group. I think the, all the alien groups are going to connect to your own group. Yeah. You know what? But it's also, it's also, we're not as refined as them. Like we like we're not as evolved and it's almost like they would rather us kind of just stay in our own. Uh oh, we lost her. So this is what happens. The uh, the energy. Well, she's back I, I <laughs> there for a minute. I don't know what. Yeah, happened. no, this is this is <laughs> them. See, they're, they're fooling around with the camera here. This oh. is they, they wanted to show us something. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't want us to talk about this anymore. Probably, but anyway. Well, no, I understand. It's so my sense is it's kind of like humans, you know, stay in your lane kind of thing. You know, you guys aren't aren't ready to hang out with with the with the bigger community yet. You know, we're we're still. It's kind of I, another way to put it is it's like a Thanksgiving. We're at the kitty table, and yeah. we're not ready to sit at the, with the yeah. adults. Yeah. Um, and you know, that's there's some truth to that. You know, we're. <laughs> So That's funny. very cool. No, thank you for that explanation. That that gives me a little bit clear idea. And it sounds so similar to the nature spirits. You know, nature spirits have a very um when I tried to connect to them, 
they have this very strong love of the earth and they hate what yes. we do what we do as humans they, do. they love the earth yeah and they hate how humans just have no we're we're just completely it, thoughtless and how we treat it i didn't yeah. say the word but we are ignorant when it comes to well what did you say i'm sorry i, I said we're just stupid yeah yeah we're ignorant I, you know so we're ignorant we're, yeah i mean it's feelings but when you go to the beach you pick up after yourself you know, yeah, you it's expect somebody it, to come behind you and pick up. And it's um, it's maturity. It's really yeah. just comes down to, ma to maturity. Yeah. The more mature we get, like you said, you became vegan. It's like you reach different levels of awareness and mm -hmm. and and you become more, you know, become more responsible right. as you as you evolve. One has to. Well, thank you, Bonnie, for being here with us. Um, yeah. I feel like I want to give a hug to your team, too. <laughs> to <laughs> your team. Oh, anyway, your family, everybody. Um, yeah. It was great. Um, we'll see each other again. Let's do. Thank you so much. <laughs> hug, hug. Thanks. Hugs. Bye-bye. Okay. Take care. Take care.